remember we are all learning such that you can able to apply this in your exam that you expected uh, in a few days to come. In December, you should, you should all be sitting for exams and uh, you should be tested on these areas and we expect you to pass. And uh, that is why we need to uh, catch up and ensure that each one of you is at the same page as, as we. On the screen right now, I've displayed the paper and uh, it brings together what we're learning, the tricks and uh, tactics, all meant to ensure that they sharpen our skills, uh, regardless of what kind of paper you're going to face, you can get it. I would like a student to read for us question number one. Someone to read for us question number one. Yes, as I can see the hand here for... Jason, Jason, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so, uh, before I said, read, so, uh, may I ask a question? Yes, please, go ahead. Uh, is this a practical or is this a project? It is the practical, but it contains the project questions. Okay. Uh, question one A. In a school, students reside in three dormitories red, blue, and orange. Each dormitory is managed by a patron, and each student is required to register for a game. So, Roman 1, open a database program and create a database named School Game that will be used to manage the games. One mark. Created. You open the database program create a database named school games and that will be used to manage the games and look at that one mark that is for creating a database but look at question part two says you create the following tables uh, using the specifications but look at what how much marks that is seven marks i want to believe that um, if this was your time and these are marks for all of you that you could uh, you could uh, uh, keep to yourselves, especially all of us having been able to learn about how to create a database, how to design tables, which you all agreed yesterday when I was asking and all of you said, you know how to create a table, you know how to uh, design a table in terms of the fields, which is exactly what it's talking about. Seven marks are clear on that. Now, look at the table design for or your databases. There is a, a student table, and this is important on the description that the student number contains unique registration. The student name, like so, here is you're doing actually designing. And uh, all of us having studied on how to design, I don't think that you should challenge you on that. So um, I'm moving down. Unless you have a question, you just put up your hand. We shall revisit that as I move down. That. So there is a student table containing the student number, uh, unique, a name, and code for each game, and uh, codes for each dormitory. Uh, same case with patron table contains uh, patron uh, code, a name, and also the patron table contains the patron code and patron name, and the like. Same case with dormitories, contains the dormitory code, then uh, dormitory name, and also the patron of the dormitory. Then there is a games table which contains the game code, uh, the name of the game, and that. So uh, I want us to open a database. This should take us a, a very quick way. And remember the objective we said, if the question is, the, the paper contains two questions, then you should get all of them 100%. Uh, most likely it might contribute 25%, but look at the relationship. Paper three and paper two, using this kind of approach I'm using right now, we are looking at the same thing. Like you have a question to read, it is your work to interpret it into a project which you can present based on your understanding after reading the question on that. So those who have computers right there, you can we can go together very quickly. If you have a computer there, you can just turn it on. 
open a database open the access using access a database can you see it can you see the database i'm opening no no we can't see it Share the entire screen. I believe now you can see it or so if this was your case, paper, then you can start on this point on creating a blank database. And as usual, we say then sure you create a folder somewhere where you place your work and know where you placed it. So don't just open uh, the move forward, but instead after choosing new uh blank database and you sure to remember these things to, to work on one the name of the database then the location where you've placed it don't get confused those are very basic rules you don't expect a student from at your level to get challenged on so pick the desktop and i've uh, called this one uh databases exam so I've put it on the desktop and I've uh, uh, created. That is a standard procedure all of us are going to do it. The next method I said on, for those who've been in class, I said, do not continue with using this table unless you switch it to design view and work on it. And I had advised, if possible, close it up, start your work clean. So from the create button, choose table design, and then start designing your table, but we have instructions that are guiding us in terms of design. So let's look at the first table we're going to design on this. I'm releasing. We have a database in place and we've already kept our one mark present. There's a mark for having a database. But more importantly, don't forget these kind of simple rules. School games. If that is a name that has been told to you to use as, as, as a file name, then that should be the most important thing you should remember. If you don't do, if you don't use the right name, then you're at the mercy of the examiner because you are just giving somebody a whole world chest to look for what is likely to be your work. Your work may be having two files, three files, and the like. So if you've not given the right name, the examiner will be looking for a file, a database called school games. And if you can't see it, then it, you can as well as say you have not provided the work to be marked on that. You can't have six other different documents, different names, and you expect the examiner to open all of them, trying to see whether it's your work inside. When people are busy and working to earn, they might, you may end up losing in terms of that. Now, uh, in that case, therefore, from that advice, use the correct name as, as, as told by that. And um, for purposes of this specific uh, uh, training, I'll be doing exactly that. So file new blank database, which we can place on the same desktop still in the folder called 4512. And I'm going to call it school games then create so that way you are guaranteed of your one mark and the like same same procedure and uh, so, so step two is said create and then your uh, table design should be the first step check your question to be sure where to start from uh that's what i'm doing so uh look at the first one is called students there's something I mentioned earlier yesterday about uh, when you're going to use the lookup field property. If you're going to use lookup, then you must have individual tables that don't copy data from other tables first. For example, look at the uh, games table. This is the lowest level. It, is, it doesn't require linking to another table, any data. Then those, those should be the first tables to begin with. Game, code, Game name, like 
if it is a, a, a patron, maybe patron uh, code, patron name. That should be the first one. If you intend to use the lookup, but if you don't intend to use the lookup for your work, then you can start with anywhere uh, at that point because you're not going to make a lookup, looking up for a table that does not exist. You understand, boys? Do you understand? Yes. 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 Okay, very good. I can see Job Muturi has asked if uh, the ca case does not does matter. Case does not matter. Case does not matter at all. But uh, my advice is use the case given. Don't don't try to be a uh, to be better than the examiner in terms of that. Just choose exactly what is it. I can see the second question from someone says. What do you mean by lowest table? Uh, I mentioned here, look at the table like students. When you're designing it, it means at some point, if you're going to use lookup, let's look at a, a field like what, game code. Can you use a lookup if you don't have a game code existing? Can you? No. You can't. So if you're designing the student, the student table first, once you create on the, the field called game code and you're using lookup, when you try to look up, you can't look up for a table that does not exist at all. So the lowest table therefore in terms of uh, uh, relation, uh, relating to another are tables that are not related to anything. For example, the patron. This does not have any field requiring you to look up from another table. You understand now? Do you get it? That was from Kinara. Yes. All right, very good. Yes. Does using a lookup wizard uh, increase your marks? Not really, it doesn't make a difference. That is for your own good. If you use lookup or you don't use the lookup, same thing, as long as the table, uh, you answer the questions of the examiner. If he's going to look at the relationship and you can see it, that's what matters. We only said that is very important for your good. You are able to relate data, even create relationships automatically on that. So we can use any of the approaches by using lookups or by not using lookups and then we, we get to data directly on that. It is even possible for you to modify later on and add the lookups if you want to. Remember yesterday I showed you how to look at the field properties and then you change the source from a text box into a combo, and then you refer to either values or into an existing field on that. So let's go ahead and start uh, with the uh, very basic approach. Um, so patron table does not have any relationship, any rela uh, relation to another table. So I'll start with that one, patron table. And the patron table contains patron code and patron name. I've copied patron code. And uh, so there's a patron code, there is a patron name. And it's important for you to notice in terms of the, this description here. I want to open back the uh, Word document. You are told the field name and description. This description, I'll prefer you to always add it where it requires, contains patron's name. Do exactly like that. You have a description section of that, patron name. And the description for the patron code is, uh, contains, hmm? contains the patron, Uh, code name and then the patron name. Sorry, I think these are the two names. So I should copy the next one. Yeah, so the, the first step is as, as straightforward as that. And we already have, uh, I guess this was to be somewhere. This was to be somewhere. Code. Okay. 
run this. So uh, that description is important. Don't leave it out as you're doing that. And then uh, what is next expected on this? What do we need to do next? What is the description of the What is there? Go ahead, go ahead, Ian. The description of the patron code. Patron code, it is, I've just copied the way it is. I've copied exactly the way it is. The description is here. Contains the patron, I, I, th I think that must have been a typo, but it should have been the patron code name. It should have been patron code. That's what I expect it to be. Contains the patron, patron code. It should be like that. Thank you for that. All right, what next after you create a table like that? Edit the data type. You edit the data type, very important. Now, I want to go back to the question and uh, that will help us a lot. I can see people of music and uh, business have issues, but uh, they should be able to handle that, I believe so. All right, let's look at the patron, uh, patron code. Patron code contains the patron code, and this one contains the patron name. So you are not told what kind of what kind of data it should have, what kind of uh, data type. If it contains the patron code, the best you can do if you want to know what kind of uh, how it's be structured is to go down into the data that is going to be entered in the patron, and then you can see the patron code contains P zero zero one. P002, P003. So what kind of data type is that? Short text. It's simply short text, very good. That is short text. That is short text. That's all right, Calvin is all right. We just edited that. that. So um, short text is very okay on that. Same case with the patron name, so we're not changing anything else. What are we supposed to do next in designing? So it is you sit in an examination, you've already taken a step up to where we are. What are we supposed to do next? From here. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody was asking about the uh, difference between auto number and number. What's the difference between that? What's the difference? I think in auto number, the, the computer provides the numbers to be used, but in number, you're the one who provides the number. Very good. Very good. Auto number, you are the one providing the numbers. I said we don't use this. Some people don't have their names. They're using dashes like this ones. You can see them. Can you see them from your screen, boys? Yes. Uh, this, this is not advisable in the class at all, at all. So advise them, and uh, you will not be allowed to join back uh, class, please. Just use the right names. This is not allowed at all. So use your names. You are a student. What are you hiding from? We are learning. So the issues we've been solving last week are because of people using those kind of pseudonyms. That is why we have some who are missing in class right now, because they can't join back. Yeah. Please identify yourself properly you are learning and uh, a short time you go and do your own things you want to use your funny names use them where you want but this is time for class so an organized class parents here and students are here from other schools as well as your school so the image you present matters a lot i was asking about what you expected here what do you do next if you are the one doing the exam what do you do identify the primary key yes andrew are you supposed to identify the primary key very good that's very important all of you remember that this is the time you identify your primary key and uh go ahead and specify the primary key go forward so what do you how do you put the primary key and which field is the most appropriate the patron code, code. Patron code. Patron code definitely uh -huh. how do you make it a primary key Right click. Right click on the can right click. Yeah. And then you choose primary key. Very good. So what next? Uh, 
So I have a question. Yes, please. Do some. I uh, does the current version of MS MS Success uh, automatically choose the primary key, or is it something that you have to manually pick? No, no. no. <clears throat> if you let Access choose for you the primary key, all versions. If you don't choose the primary key, the AI tries to suggest for you a possible primary key, and you can agree or disagree on that. But don't let Access choose for you the primary key. You are the owner of the database. You're the one who knows which data uh, should be unique and which one is not. So choose the primary key yourself and specify that. Don't use the auto ID that may be provided by access if you don't choose one. They try to create for you one, but don't use that. And if you use that, then you must have another probably index to identify your own data. Because what is provided is just basically maybe an auto number, one, two, three, four, five, six. But within your data, assuming that this is data for your school, you're at Alliance High School, you require to identify and prevent duplication of student name, for example, I mean, student admission numbers. So you may go, you may have to go ahead and choose that uh, admission number field under properties, go ahead and make it what you call an index. Uh, yes, can you see the, can you see the way I'm pointing right now? Can you see my cursor I'm moving it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Then you have to go ahead and make it an indexed like this. Then uh, it is indexed, yes, no duplicates. So if you use the default key, then you have to still go ahead and identify a field or a candidate key, a candidate field. A candidate, a candidate field is a field which can be a primary key and make it or um, index it. So what next, according to our question, I'm going back to the question because this is this should be replicated on all of them. Let me go back to the question. So what are you supposed to do next? Uh -huh. The reason why I've taken you back here is because I want you to see, uh, let me close this one. It's because I want you to see what happens here. You are advised on the kind of uh, table to create. Madam Jen, good morning. Yeah, si jangi ofisi, lakini mtani pati ya kama one hour tafadali. There's some involvement. Ah, sawa sawa basi. Thank you. Yes, yes, I'll be there in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, Karibu. God bless you, Tumata. Thank you. All right, the reason why I'm taking you back here is because of this. Create tables named. This is the point I want you to understand. And just like the other ones, we said names are very important. The database name, table name, and the like. So I'm highlighting those names. Dormitory. So you're not going to create a table for your own. You're creating based on what the question is asking about. And then it's called game. So we highlight the possible names in that. Okay. Then, uh, so we can now go back so that you can answer the question that I had asked and uh, you've not answered. So what should you do next, therefore, from this? You save the table. You save the table. And what name are you supposed to give it? Petrum. Uh, TBL Petrum. So at this stage, you don't have to use TBL. Don't use TBL because the examiner has not told you. This is not your project. So at KCSE, where you are not specified on names and the like, use TBL. Right now, when you are here, you are not using TBL.
Ay, ay, ay. I'm trying to compare the, 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 the file name and it's important for you to know to see the name I've used. It's not any other name. It is called patron, not patrons. That's what I'm trying to say. So it should be the same name that you've been told by the examiner. Don't try to write your own names. Very good. So the same now will be replicated on the others. You don't have to repeat the same process. So let's look at uh, the second possible field from your question. It's a uh, uh, there, we, there we go so which, which which do you think is the next likely table from this from what you've learned now from what you said what do you think should be our second table we have game table dormitory table patron we've already done that and the student table what do you think should be the next table Yes. Oh, somebody's using asking the question, why not choose TBL? Okay. What did we say? Why are we not using TBL prefix? Yeah. Uh -huh. You can try, go ahead. Go ahead. You say hey. we should we should we should name the tables according to what has been given by the exam. Very good, very good. And you also said uh, we only use TBL in our puzzle. Yes, if you're going Not to do your project, you'll do you will use TBL. This is paper two. Paper two is an instruction paper. How you follow instructions. So the examiner has told you to use this name, use that. But when you're doing your project or your case, yes, or where you're given that six paragraphs, you read through and answer question, it is you to come up with the tables and therefore identify your tables using the conventional naming strategy. That. All right. Uh, which is the next table? I want us to use what you said, what I described earlier. What, which would be the appropriate table? Shall we go next? Game table. Which one? Uh, the game table. The game table. And uh, if I can I ask why you chose game table and not students? Uh, it's the only one that is not related. Like, for example, the DOM table, you'll have to use the button code, which is the button table. And the but and the student table, you have to refer to the game table for the game code. But for the game table, you don't refer. Very good, very good. So game table is a very is, is not compound table. We're not referring in any field. We're not relating to any other field. So it should be the next table. It's called game table. So we need the game code, game name. Uh, contains game code. So I've just copied this so that you can move fast with this one. So um, back to our database. Create so we're done with this one. You can close it once you finish designing this one, close it up and let's go next and create our next one. Create table design. Uh, there is what it was called what? game code. Sorry, it's supposed to be this one. Then there is a game. contains that and uh, just like that we said what kind of data type is going to be held here we already we, we already have it right here in your question paper and uh, we said you scroll down look at the sample data that is going to capture for games it is gm001 gm002 what kind of data type is that data type? 
it's, it's going to be short text still very good that is short text so you go ahead and still uh, accept that as it is and then the name still short text just like the other one we need to specify the primary key pick it right click and identify it next thing we said is to save if you remember and then you give it give it the name Hold game that is done close let's go to the third table somebody's asking what if you started with the game table instead of the patron table that is still okay that will still work the only thing i said you should be considering is uh don't go for a compound table don't go for a compound table if you intend especially to use the lookup because what are you going to look up you look up to an existing table you understand plug that you get it yes great so let's go ahead and look at the third table now we know what to do we don't need to take too much time there so which what should be the next table dormitory table we can go to dormitory table mm, sorry we're looking at the design dormitory table uh so look at the dormitory table it is going to refer to a table which already exists it has a reference to patron code, which we already have. So that is quite okay. That. So uh, I need to look at two things. Number one is the name. The name is dormitory. Number two, uh, we can look at the data type for the for the primary key. It is D001, D002. That is what? Which kind of data type is that? Short text. That is short text. Can still work with us. Short text. Very good. So let's go ahead back to our database and uh, complete that very quickly. Create table design, and the first field is called. Uh, what was the name of the first field? Do you remember? Game code. Game code. Uh, game code. It's called DOM. DOM code, DOM name. DOM code, DOM name. Patron code. Patron. And then there's something that you we are not added on the other side called the description. Add that. You don't have to be denied a mark for what you for not following instructions. So the DOM code contains DOM code contains dormitory code contains dormitory patron code. Let's just duplicate that our database uh, contains that. Uh, it said contains DOM code. This one contains DOM name. Spelling of the DOM. Oh yes, sorry for that, thank you. DOM and then DOM. DOM code, DOM name. And Dormitory patron code. Next, we had mentioned about making sure the primary key is well uh, identified. Select it, then click the primary key. Save it. The file name that we highlighted over there it was called what? Dormitory. Good, we're done. What is the next table? Next table. Student. Under the game table, you mixed up the data description. Oh, the game table design. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. The game con contains the game code. The game contains the name of the game. Thank you for that. Let's see. 
So let's go ahead and uh, look at the third table. We said it's called. And remember, all this work is supposed to be done within two, hour, two and a half hours. So uh, you have about one hour to finish up in terms of that. The second one is called uh, student table. I'm sure that's the last one. Yes, we have the rest of the tables. So student table uh, is going to be saved as student. This is important. And then it contains student number and then student name. So you can go ahead and uh, have that done here. It contains student number, contains uh, student, contains, what was the next? There is the game code and room code. And also, what was the next? What was the next one, boys? Dumb code. Yeah? Dumb code. Dumb code. Dumb code. Uh, we can add the descriptions very quickly because we said you don't let any marks disappear because of any reasons. So I'm going to have this one contains unique registration code and contains name of a student. And I think that the game code contains the game code, I believe so. I can just copy one. Mm -hmm. Codes of each dormitory. Um, we said earlier on that one of the reasons why we chose to use uh, an approach from the non-complex to complex tables is because of uh, relation, relating and we can use the lookup. So in this one, we can, we can try and engage that and see how that is effective. But first, we have to identify the primary key. We have to save our table. What is the name of the table? Student. 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 So we said, again, we already have a table called Yamish. So what do we do next? We have to use a lookup. And it's a sound coming in. This is the name. Who is this called B? Yeah? Someone is just called B, one letter only. Why? Why should you do that? All right, let's go ahead and uh, and uh, finish up this. We said, if you have to relate, the reason why we started with the lower tables is because we can make use of the lookup wizard. So in this case, we can actually go ahead and say, under short text, use the lookup that we taught you earlier on, because it already exists and the like. That makes it work easier for you. And that's what I would like you to do. I don't want you to complicate it yet, but I know you'll still be able to use other methods to do the same. So. The lookup for game code will be next. Look at the games. And then pick the game code. It is. Yesterday I showed you how you can still make use of a you show the name of the game plus the code, which means if you pick, for example, the game name, we said it also picks what from your yesterday's class. If you just pick the game name, what else must happen? So, so pick the game code because it's a game. Yes. 
Hey boys, you've forgotten. We said if you pick any other field that is not the primary key, then automatically the primary key must be included. Do you remember that? Do you remember yes. that? It must, it must be there automatically. Uh, but uh, for purposes of this class, let me just pick the game code only, not including any other field as, as instructed. Next, and then finish. Game code. And that. Ah, yeah. Now, next, let's uh, go ahead and therefore uh, do the same for dormitory code. We, since we already have it existing, we said click on down arrow, look up wizard, and go ahead and identify the dom dormitory and pick the dom code. So that's why we started it with these other tables first, such that we can able to link to them later on and save changes. Right. The same case happens to another table, if you remember. Do you remember which one? Do you remember, boys? We said the patron, no, no, not the patron, but the the DOM table. Dormitory. Yes, also links to what? The patron. Can the patron is good. Yes. So we go back and do the same thing. Mm. Oh, okay, okay, you got it. That's good. If you've got it, that's okay, Philip. Uh, okay, great. So, dormitory links to patron code. Let's do the same thing also. Dormitory design links to the patron. Under the patron, uh, look up and it looks up to the patron. Patron code. save changes. So we've done the first part of it, which was give us about, uh, uh, I think seven max, if I'm not wrong. So we designed that. Let's go back to our question. So we have done the first part. And uh, which was asked about, uh, create the tables named this, which we have done. So seven max are in place. And I'm sure all of us, when you're doing it, you're going to have that, uh, uh, all of the marks. Let's not drop any mark. At KCSC, every mark counts, my friend. If you intend to do law, you intend to do computer science, any course, you can miss one mark and it can mess you up. So let's not try and avoid, um, let's try and avoid any, any reason why you can lose a mark for that. So let's look at the next question. Create relationships between the tables. How do we do that yesterday? That was part of our class yesterday. Today we are doing a Gentlemen, if you can remember, yesterday we did something on relationships. That was part of our class. It was a, a, a build up to this. So, how do we answer question number three? How do we get these three marks? That's my question. Because you have three marks here, Bendy. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, there's someone that's written something here. Okay, okay, okay. Somebody asking about what is the importance of a lookup wizard? Who can answer that? Why should we look use the lookup wizard instead of the, the longer method of connecting? Do you know the reason why? Mm -hmm. You have an idea? Let's go ahead and try. So does it automatically create relationships within uh, the table? Very good. Importance number one is that it can create for you the relationships automatically without having to, to create it manually. That is an advantage. That's correct. 
another one. Why should you use a lookup? Lookups also ensure data integrity. Data integrity is, is an example that I demonstrated yesterday. If you were in class yesterday, yes, very good. Thank you, Kinara. Chances of errors are lowered. So if you, you're not going to type a number, you're going to pick from the existing students. For example, if you are doing a dormitory entry and you are typing the name of the dormitory, then at the end of the dormitory, you have something like this. Where is it here? Whenever you're entering data to a dormitory, you will enter the name of the dorm, the dorm code and the dorm name. What you're going to enter next is the patron, patron code. So if you don't know which patron codes exist, let's say you have got 17 patrons. Do you even remember their codes? Nope, it'd be tricky. So it means you close your database, go and open the patrons table, identify the code of the patron you want, write it somewhere, come back to the dormitories and put it there, right? But if you're using a lookup, if you click on the field patron code, it shows you who are the existing patron codes you can pick from. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, great. So yes. we can proceed now. Uh, I think someone had asked about. Okay, yes, thank you very much, Daniel. He had answered the question. I'd asked about how do we get to the relationships? And uh, I think I need to have that shown on the screen. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel, Kyoko. So how do you show the relationships? And he said, uh, we, uh, I think he was in yesterday. Let me see, I think there's another answer this one. Uh, you can, you can still, but it's advisable that you uh, procedurally start with it. Just asking a question, can we start the uh, student table and then create this later? You can do that, but you don't have to, you don't have too much time. You don't have monopoly of time within exam room to go and back and replicating your, uh, replicating your work. As you create your design, your table for students, you can quickly link to the rest that already exists on that. And then there was, I think the last one, if I'm not wrong, I saw. Uh, okay. Okay, I think that's all. Okay, so that's very important. To create relationships from our yesterday's class, we said, you click on what? Can you see these boys? Where my cursor is pointing? Yes. 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 Database tools. That's where your relationships are. Database tools. Thank you for that, Daniel, for showing, uh, reminding the rest. And then you click on relationships. So I want you to see that we actually already have relationships. So whoever had asked a question, why should we use lookup? At this stage, I'm sure you can tell that by using lookup, our data already has got with uh, relationships in place. Let's confirm our relationships are okay. Uh, so we have a game here. We have a patron. Mm. Just confirm how they are related, all of them. We have the patron code connected to the dormitory. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. Yeah. And we have got the dormitory code connected to the student table. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Then we have the last relationships. That is a game uh, the game code related to the student table. That's also correct. And if you wanted to, if you are told to enforce referential integrity, it is at this stage you can just uh, uh, enforce it. You double click or right click and edit the relationship. Then you add those enforce or uh, integrity if you have to. But if you are not told, don't bother wonder, uh, worrying what is not necessary. You want to edit these relationships, you click on this line. The relationship between games and students is this line here. You can select it, you edit the relationship. If you can see my cursor, alternatively, you can just double click it. Then you can edit the relationship at that time. That. So by using lookup, our relationships were automatically created on that. 
which are self changes and close. So it means we actually we answered another question in the process of working with another question, the like. Yes, 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 that's correct. That's correct. That is from Carlton. Differential integrity, you will see, uh, uh, you will see a sign of that. But first, I'm looking at the second question that we have on the table. Yes, there we are. So uh, as you move down, we have done, we have the three marks plus the seven marks plus one max. So we have got 11 marks already done. Then you have of course question number B, one says create a form for each table that will be used for data entry. Those are two marks more to give us 13 marks. How do you get those, those two more marks? I'm sure all of us can achieve that. You've been learning that. But for purposes of this class specifically, I'm going to do that on a very quick uh, uh, approach. You are required a form to enter data to a dormitory. The quickest way is while the dormitory is selected, I don't know which version you're using, but versions later than 2010 have a lot of automation for that. You don't have to do much. Uh, like this, I can, you can use a wizard or you can use this form, uh, more of it, call it auto form. It can put for you data automatically and use that. You have not done anything, actually you automatically, uh, your AI engine automatically that did for you the work of creating the form. If you, if you do it once more again, let's see, click on the form. If you want to do one for students or game, click on game, create, and then you use that uh, form. It will automatically create for you uh, that table that you want. The adoption could be you create using a form wizard, and then choose the fields, proceed with the type of table uh, uh, form you want, the, the name of the form, finish. So you still have the form also in that sense. So we have one for forms. Now, I want us to design one, then we replicate, because this is how I want you to do it later in future. Uh, first, my intention is, is to ensure that we don't use too much space. So these two columns, look at how I select them drag from the empty space down to highlight the two and then you can make sure that they don't take up so much space i push them back because the code can't be too big the name of the game i don't think it would be that big that's why i'm just cutting them down a little because i can have an extra space here where i want to show you how to add the navigations very quickly and then replicate the same navigations on all other forms. You don't have to do it again and again and again and again. You just have to replicate that. There's a question there. Uh, somebody says, and what, uh, and what, there is no field relating uh, on the other table. How do you create a subform? Mm. Subforms are not useful unless you've got some kind of relationship on that. A subform is not useful until you have got something relating there. I don't know if you understand that. A subform, we use something called a child and a parent relationship. So child parent cannot exist where there is no relationship. There's nothing related on that. Therefore, there could be some form of relationship such that whichever record you've opened here can be related to a subform that is shown that. Do you understand that? That was who? Yes. Do you get it? Yes. All right. There must be some form of relation. Yes. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. May you kindly pardon on your last point. All right. Uh, I'm actually answering this question here that you just asked. Uh, that's Fred. What if there is no field relating on the other table? How do you create a subform? Even if you create a form, you can never have a relationship. It's not related, it can't help. Why? Because a subform is connected to the main form and the joining place is called the child parent relationship. I think I should show you that very well for you to see. Let me do one for patron. I will come back to this and finish it. Create, uh, let me use this, which automatically creates for your subform on that. So let's look at this subform in design view. Let's look at the design of this table, of, of this form. 
and then sorry now having selected a sub form i want you to look at the properties and uh, more importantly this is these are formats no not formats i'm interested on the data now look at this relationship here where data is connected there is the link master field that uh, the, there is a patron at the top there is a dormitory and therefore the master field contains patron code then there is a child you can see that the child field is what the patron so the subform therefore is connected to the parent the subform is considered a child connected to a parent through a common field on this otherwise you can't be able to know which to connect you need to know which is the master which is the child and how are they related like and uh, it is it, it uses this kind of uh, expression show dormitory for each record in a patron using the patron code that is the kind of relationship we're talking about right i'm sure you get the point but if you don't get it i'm sure uh, we shall be revisiting that all the time so you can't have a sub form if it doesn't have a relationship to a, or connected to that all right so i said for each of the forms uh even when you're going to do your project i, I expect you to do this ensure each of your forms have number one navigation so i'll be using design view buttons it's much easier straightforward let's add the first button there is to add a new record i'm sure you're following i can see ryan your hand is up i have a question yes please. Uh, when you talk about sub forms yes does that mean that uh the way you arranged it before in the relationships the patron uh then the others are are uh, have a relationship with the patron mean that the patron is the main form then the others from the patron are sub sub okay first i want us to understand what's a sub form a sub form is basically a form inside a form <laughs> that is it you want to have a form which contains data relating to another form which is the bigger form contains data on that did you understand let me let me, let me show you a very quick one uh let me repeat yeah okay let me repeat so let's have a, a quicker i'll use patron let me use uh students for example <clears throat> create uh, this gives us a sub form almost automatically so that's not given us. I don't want us. To, I want us to want to take us quickly to that. But if it doesn't, we can create very quickly. But I don't want us to have data that is redundant. I want us to remain clean. So this patron is connected to a dormitory. Let me open this and see. So there's data. Oh, we haven't put any data on this. So that's why you can't see properly that um, the current record patron code uh, we get here will relate to the to the patron you can see here at this point even as we move next you should be seeing that kind of connection connection the like so a sub form is basically like having another data another data set this is one data set this is another data set but the two are joined based on data found on this table or uh, this sub form and data contains on this table so why do you sub form sometimes you need data from the other table to be shown in your current form that is when you can use a sub form nobody's forcing you into sub forms you use it if you really need to use it and if you really need to use it then there could be data on the other table you know this is another table inside here called i think this one is called uh, dormitories dom code dom name here in the outer table we have what you call the patron the patron code patron name but the patron is connected to a dormitory right yeah yeah so as you move through the patrons, what do you expect to be seeing here at the bottom in the subform? The dormitory associated. Yeah, the dormitories, which they are probably the patrons. That is it. So our subform is just doing one thing that as you navigate, it is adding more information for you. That as you move forward, we shall be seeing which dom does this patron contain. 
So if you wanted to do some additional calculations on this side here, you can even reference directly to the child or a subform or a field inside here into your calculations and the like. Sometimes it could be having, let me take an example. Last year's project contained type of lorry and the, how much they should be paid or, or the rate. So you could actually have a subform saying, uh, I'm, I've picked uh, an, a truck. And as you pick a truck, you can have their rates down here. So you don't have to go navigating to look for the rates. If you need to calculate how much, you say you just need to put how many trips? Seven. So the vehicle is this one, trip seven. But outside here, we can calculate how much has been generated. Why? Because we know the subform containing how much is charged per trip. Do you understand, boys? Are you following? Yes. Yes. Yeah, if you're thinking. Yes. So if you have a, lo a lorry, the rate is this. If you go next, you'll see maybe a, a pickup. A pickup is charged 200 per rate. But the additional information is contained in a subform. And we can use it to calculate to determine total cost for each. So you only use a subform if you intend to get that additional data. If you don't need it, there's no of you having it right there. Okay. Unless you've been advised. Uh, there's another question here. Oh, I'm not audible. You can't hear me. Are you having to, okay, how many, how many can hear me? Just we can. We can. We can hear you. Okay, you can hear me, that's all right. Then I think your speaker could be having an issue. Your speaker could be having an issue on that. So let's have uh, uh, the standard procedure I'm telling you that you should be copying and replicating. So make use of the design buttons. The first button I want to see on your forms, especially your project, is the record operation, not navigation, record operation, add a new record. Then here, add a record. Because I intend to use it standard, it can be add a new game, add a record. Let it be add a record. Then avoid using command six. We said all command buttons should start with what? CMD in small letters, then the name of it, add capital record. That is how we should identify buttons. We should use, we, in your project, you should be, we, we end up using these buttons inside there. Remember we said for every button, there's a code behind it or a macro. And therefore, there are times when you need to reference it and do something else. So I expect all your forms to have add a record. Number two, I expect all your forms to have in your project uh, under record operation, under record operations, uh, save a record. CMD, save. The next button I expect you to have, I still under buttons. And notice that I had, I think I indicated this earlier. If the controls is not pressed down, even if you, you pick a button and draw, nothing happens. If you're using your computer and you put down and you don't see anything happening, it is because the controls wizard is not checked. So you are forced to use the long method of creating a, an action on that. I hope you understand what I mean. So let's go to the third button I want you to have. Record is the delete record. Delete, you can use icons. I'm using this so that all of us can know. CMD, delete. Then another, another button I intend you to have within this is, uh, is on uh, record navigation. So go to the previous record. We can use arrows. Uh, let me use arrows for now. CMD previous. Another button I want us to add is for forward. So add a button uh, for record navigation. Go to the next record. Uh, next record is use an icon for that. CMD next record. And the other button I want you to have lastly is the close to close this form. So under form operation now, not record of operation, not record navigation. 
under form operation. The form operation will be to close the form. Uh, you can have close form or just the word close. Uh, the command button we said let's not have, let's avoid using command 12 command 13 command 15 instead let's call it what cmd then arrange this properly because you shall be replicating them on all your forms i expect them to be in this order you can uh, add a new record you can uh, save the record sorry you can move, uh, you can delete a record, you can move it to the left or to the right. Let me get through that. And you can close that. So I want us to arrange them properly so that they are equal. I want to make these buttons um, balanced. So size will fit it to the widest. Now they are on the same size. Then we make them align them to the left so that they are all have a straight line. You can see they are perfectly uh, fitted on the left hand side. And you can add that, have the button that. Uh, if I wanted this close to equalize these other buttons, then you shift, select the two buttons, right click, and then you say size to the widest so that these buttons are the same. And then I can arrange them. Even if it was put on this point on here, I'll, while you select, I know this button is already aligned. This one is not. But by right clicking, <coughs> you can align to the left. So it means that it's exactly the same side of the left side and uh, have that. Now, why is this important? Save that. Let me save this form. Were you told which name to use? Were you told the name to use for your forms? No. Were you? You are not told. Look at the question. It says create a form for each table that will be used for data entry. That's all. So you have the authority to use whichever one, but I would wish you use the same names as that. So you're not you've not been restricted to some name. Therefore, save it. And I want you to. So have I saved it? Yes, it's called game. Uh, select all this data here and copy it. Let it be in your clipboard and close this form. This one is called game. You are told you have a form for each. So we done for game. We can do for patrons. Create a form. We can even use this if we want. There's nothing wrong with that. Design. I think I use it for one with a sub form. For those who have questions, can see. And then right click and paste your buttons here. These buttons will do the same work as they have been put on the other side because they are connected to. So let's go save this one as a patron form. And I'd like you to use the FRM so that you can identify them. You have not been restricted with that. Close. The next form you require is for uh, students, unless for dormitories, create, you can use any, there's no specific formula to use. Uh, right click, design, pick any, they are connected, they are all linked. This space is too big, we are not utilizing it all. Paste, put the same set of uh, command buttons there. Save that. Uh, it's called dormitory sub form close next we have got students create uh auto form right click design let's make them a use a little less space let's use the rest of the space for our work with the command buttons and the like save it this is a form students i think we have all of them that's done that's all so you can attempt and see whether that works if you open forms you can see next that there's no data we're adding on that let's try uh students the forms the buttons still work correctly good
can see a question here. Mm. Oh, yesterday's lesson recording. Okay, I'll send you the link. I've not yet downloaded it. I've not yet put it up. That's why uh, we will put it. We put it in up. Uh, does it matter when giving a name of the database? Case matter. If for conventional purposes, look at the way I've named here uh, students. FRM is in small letters. Students, S, S is capital on that. That matters for purposes of uh, how you identify your work in terms of that. That matters on that. All right. Uh, lastly, let's go to the next question that we've left behind. Now, enter the data in the tables. So uh, that is, that's not so much. I think we can just copy and paste the data because we have it. Let's start with the, the, the ones that we refer to as the lowest no relationship. There is a patterns. I think this is supposed to be zero, zero, not O, O, zero, 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 zero. So let's try and see if we can be able to paste this data directly. Let's head into our database. That was for patrons, right? Yeah. Remember, as a student, what you are expected to do is that you you are required to type it one by one. I've pasted it because to to avoid wasting so much time on that. Uh, and how you add data for patrons, you're supposed to open this and add add data on that. So you can see our navigation buttons work now, and we can change. So you add type the data, that. then we can actually close this using the same buttons. What about the second set of data we have not added? You can pick data from, uh, that's for, for dormitories. This is 001, 002, that's okay. Select, copy. For dormitories, is it uh, dormitories? You can just paste the data. You would have it. For the other data set is on uh, the examiner cannot cannot know that you copied and pasted unless you unless you. But the problem is that when you're at KCS, you don't have the soft copy like I have, so you'll have to type that. That. So copy that for games and paste it in our database. Games, paste. Then we need, I think students is the last one. Somebody else, I can see a message there. Yes, uh, Regan, you're asking, why did you add data directly to the table instead of using the forms? I think I already answered that, haven't I? Haven't I? Boys, have I not? I've just said we want to save time, that's yes. all. Yeah, we just want to save time. You are required to type it, to, to type it using your forms, and type using the forms. That's what you should do, like. Thank you for that, Regan. Indeed, that's what you're supposed to do. And then lastly, students, whoever was doing the typing, this one messed up. He used zeros instead of. And in, in students in computer, this is something you should always remember. Don't confuse zero and uh, O. If you do that, you're really in a total mess, especially in terms of data capture. So for students, we also have the data. I did that because of time. We don't have the monopoly of time to continue doing the entry of each of the record. Good, so we have all the data and that answers how many marks? This gives you nine marks. That's a lot of marks. You notice that by simply entering the data that we have done. And that. Now, uh, create a query to extract each of the following. Notice how quick this is. Student name, uh, number, name, game name. Is that difficult? But now, 
something additional is for all students who reside in orange dormitory or play basketball to get five marks. So what I want you to notice very well is that we should have a query first to have student number, name, student number, name. So we'll be using the student table, the game table, and also the dormitory and the game. That's using almost all tables the like. So it means from yesterday's, we saw how to do that. You create a query in design view, add the tables you intend to use. You intend to use the student name. You can double click instead of clicking the add. We need to know the dormitory, the game, the dormitory, and probably the patron. Don't know what to use and what to know. Because they are all related, you should see those lines there. The question wants you to have the student name, bring it down here or double click it. The student name down there. What else are you supposed to have? Student name and then game name from the game and the dormitory. So we have the game name and the dormitory. We are interested on the name of the dormitory because you're saying from orange. Look at the section called criteria. This is where you move along and put the criteria right here. They should be from which, which dormitory? Orange. Hope you can see that. And then lastly, who reside in orange dormitory or they play basketball. That's the last part. So under games, game name, sorry, here we say basketball. Now, if we write basketball here, it means that person you are picking must, I want you to notice this very well, students, because I know it will confuse most of you. If you put on the same line, it means the student must be playing basketball and from Orange House. So, so. But if you put it mm. in the next line, it means it can either be from Orange House or plays basketball. Is that point clear? Yes. 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 Yeah. So notice that differences when to use that. That's what the question is testing you on that. And then we can preview our data. Uh, currently says no data, uh, but I think it's because of the name I've typed. Uh, basketball, I wish uh, games is basketball. Could have made a mistake. I'm not sure about that. I'll test that basketball. And then orange. I want to know how I've typed it under dormitories. This one called orange. You should be okay. And uh, get your data. Don't be scared of if you get zero or you don't get any data. Probably the examiner is testing that. So don't, don't as long as you've done that, everything right on that. So how you're supposed to save it also matters a lot. It's supposed to be called uh, orange Q. Save it as orange Q query. Close that. The next question is about, uh, let me see. Uh, student name, game name for student whose names start with the letter J. That's that's very easy. That you should be able to know it. I'm not going to even do much. I'll just do create a query design using the student names only. And you say, if you have all the students and you are told they should start with letter J, it means under name, you write J, then aesthetics. Under criteria, notice that. J, aesthetics, presenter. So it means names start with a J. You can see this Jared, Julian, Janet, and Jerry. I'll, I'll just save it as uh, expected. It's, you're supposed to call it what? Uh, you save it as J query and that. Save it as J query. 
and uh, maybe there's i think there's a last question if i'm not wrong i know we are now within the time finish tabular report showing the student name patron grouped by game name i think in our next lesson that is something i will be able to demonstrate from part three so that for those students again who are going to uh, participate in a uh, computer we said we don't leave any stone unturned it is your work to ensure you understand so i'll be uh, briefly explaining how we achieve that to group the reason why i'm doing that is because especially i want to demonstrate how to group your data using reports it's very easy to do that not very complex for you to get the eight marks this question has a lot of marks for that and i want us to carry out that is there a question any question i have a question yes please oh, uh, this is, is it possible for us to acquire is it possible for us to acquire this paper the paper that we've used during this lesson so that we could practice on our own yes 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 i can send the paper to your class on the line can you display the uh -huh. Yeah, they'll be ending. But somebody's asking about time. Who is this telling us about time? This is 10 minutes past 11. And we started uh, much later than that. This is John Moise, our student. But we'll find out. Uh, we know how to get that detail. Don't worry. But, all right, boys. There's another question I think I've seen from... Um, we'll be doing paper two in opener. Uh, that is That will advise you because we want you to get used to that. We need to... Uh, we'll advise you on that because we we want you to get used to paper two we don't want wastage of marks at all so we'll advise you uh, we need to know our machine uh, you guys are so many in your class and therefore we are constrained in terms of resources but we'll try to make sure that we we all of us can participate in terms of that paper yes i'll send the paper i can forward it to your not to your emails i think you have all your emails if i'm not wrong if you did share uh yes i've already seen the email uh, when are we receiving your paper three cases as soon as you arrive here in may that's next month because today is on target you will have your paper three and you start to work on it immediately all right and uh is that i've not answered the question for uh, must you add like before the letter j no you don't you're not the one even to put it microsoft access will put for you that automatically on that it will put for you automatically on that I'm not going to do individual sending to emails. Instead, I'll be sharing with probably the class or the group email that you shared. Those who are existing the group email that we are not doing this individual sending on that. Uh, we've, shared, we've answered most of those questions. Yes. Uh, in relationships, uh, when you're enforcing differential integrity, is it a must that you tick all the checkboxes? The other ones for cascading and such? Uh, not a must. You can just enforce without uh, taking the rest. But then you okay. might be asked to specify what kind of uh, uh, enforcement you intend to. If you just, just say enforce integrity, it just take care of the basic integrity related issues. But when you say it cascade, or update cascade, it means when you change it, changes. Right? The other one, it doesn't change, it can just inform you, but does not do any change in your data. Again, when you're told to create a relationship without being told to, in, to enforce integrity, you just create the relationship as it is. Yes, don't enforce if you're not told. Don't waste time on that. That's correct. If someone had asked a question here, I think uh, the decision being recorded, we'll share it all in the portal i shared with you yesterday those were in class and um i think that is it somebody asking about zoom lesson sending tomorrow no they are not ending tomorrow we we're proceeding to next week i said you don't have to add a j to that for you automatically uh from this this job we're talking about time if you're tired just leave the class those who are intending to learn will continue learning and you'll do the same exam with all of us with the rest nobody's going to be left behind you have better things to do you just go and do don't have to be in class on that thank you boys to have a, a nice day as you proceed with the next lessons and uh, keep reading
keep reading on the time sure. yes some of us are from the defense club some of you are from a different school how can we reach out there? oh different school this is Bire. who is Friend. from different school what's your email because what just just write it on your write it on your write it write it on your text write it on the chat right so just have to able to get it You shared it on the chat. I'll be able to see it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, boys. Let's see Rashid also.